Hey friend, Brendan here. This laptop might be the Apple MacBook Air for Windows. The Asus VivoBook S15 laptop with Microsoft Copilot is powered by the Snapdragon X Elite ARM-based processor. This new processor has many fantastic benefits that may make it an excellent option for school, work, and more. However, some issues may make this a deal breaker for some of you. Let's find out if the Asus VivoBook S15 laptop is right for you because this is tech today. Now over the years, Asus has been moving beyond the flashy, complicated, gamer-oriented designs to something far cleaner and more presentable for work environments. The Asus VivoBook S15 is an excellent example of this clean aesthetic with its minimal design accents and clean logo. It draws little attention, which you may like or find boring. Personally, I could go for a touch more design. It has a great thin wedge design that is only 0.63 inches thick and weighs only 3.13 pounds, which makes it great for putting in a bag or carrying around without taking much room or hurting your back even more with tons of weight. Textbooks and everything else are already a lot. You can also easily pick it up from the table with one hand from the corner when open and unlike other laptops it doesn't really feel that difficult to do. You have ventilation on the bottom and back. Underneath you'll find the down facing speaker grills. That's not exactly my favorite placement but we'll see how they sound later on. Along the side you'll find two USB 3.2 type A Gen 1 ports, a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot which I wish was a full-size SD card slot, a full-size HDMI 2.1 port, two USB-C 4.0 Gen 3 ports that support power delivery and display out. That's perfect because you don't have a proprietary charging port but can use the included 90 watt power brick and any other charging brick with USB-C capability. You should probably use at least 90 watts but you could use a less powerful charger and a pinch to get more battery. It does have an all metal design but there's a little flex to it so it could be more robust and solid feeling like a MacBook Air. I initially thought it might be a higher quality plastic but it's actually metal. There's a notch to open the laptop easily and it's nicely balanced so it passes the one finger test. If you want you can open it to lay it completely flat. The hinge has an excellent solid resistance and a typical amount of screen wobble. Within that notch is a physical privacy slider for the camera. This is what the webcam looks like and what the microphone sounds like in a typical well-lit room and when it's quiet. Here's what it sounds like with background noise in a darker room. I have a TV on playing some things and there's supposed to be some AI noise cancellation to help your voice come through. How well do you think it performed in those scenarios? I love that it has Windows Hello, which allows you to unlock the computer with your face. I'm surprised Apple has yet to do this on its laptops given how much it made face unlock popular with the iPhone and some of the laptops have a notch. The keyboard has some really great travel and satisfying resistance and give. The spacing is excellent outside of the number key to the right, which I know that they were squished due to the space constraints, and I'd rather have them there than not. There is a slight deck flex, but you'd only notice it if you push it down hard to see if it does flex. The keys have a single zone RGB backlight, which you can customize the colors and effects for in the My Asus dashboard, but the light mostly comes through on the outside of the keys more than through to illuminate the letters and numbers. That results in it being a bit hard to see in the dark. The only thing I dislike about the typing experience is is the keys texture. If you squirm on the inside thinking about nails on a chalkboard, you'd have a bit of that experience typing on these keys. My fingernails are not that long right now, maybe two or three days since I've clipped them, and I can feel them scraping against the keys, giving me that chalkboard feel. This may not bother you, but I wanted to put it out there for those who are like me. The trackpad is large, but has a diving board wedge design, which I do not prefer, especially with its spongy feel in the bottom corners. I like a glass trackpad like what you'd find on a MacBook, Razer laptop, or other haptic based trackpads. Wedge design trackpads seriously need to go. While you can't click on the top of the trackpad, there are some neat trackpad gestures for standard settings. You can slide up and down on the left edge to control the volume, the right edge for the brightness, the top to fast forward or rewind, and swipe down from the top right corner to launch the Asus Screen Expert. It's a great use of the large trackpad that feels easy and intuitive. I love clever implementations with hardware like this. But there's more hardware to check out, like the Sihu Doro S100 ergonomic office chair that has hardware that makes it comfortable, adjustable, and adaptable to you. It has dual dynamic lumbar support for your specific body and adapts to your seating position because of its built-in springs. The backrest is uniquely adjustable to fit your shoulders, neck, and head. It also has a 135 degree recline, an adjustable seat, armrest, and a waterfall-shaped breathable seat made of high elastic mesh. If you're looking for a feature-packed affordable chair with a 
robust build, check out the Sihu Doro S100 ergonomic chair. Click the link in the description to get 6% off your order. And thanks to Sihu for sponsoring this portion of the video. Remember those speakers underneath the laptop? Let's get a quick objective audio sample to hear what these Harman Kardon speakers sound like and I'll give my thoughts. The speakers on the VivoBook S15 definitely have that boxy speaker resonating within the body kind of sound, which means it's very mid-range heavy and honky sounding. There's only a little low end and moderate airy high end to it. You can lift it up and some of the higher end frequencies start sounding less odd, but it still sounds like you're plugging the nose of the sound. A volume boost setting exists to make it louder, but it's nothing more than a high end shelf boost. Essentially, the EQ makes it sound brighter and clearer, but it's not really louder. The speakers on this laptop are not my favorite, but I'm an audio engineer. If you care little about sound quality, disregard this. But Apple leads the laptop industry in this area. The display is a highlight with its 15.6 inch 3K, 600 nit, 120 hertz OLED display that has a 0.2 millisecond response time and covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color space, which you can manually select in the My Asus Control Center. This makes it great for video editing in DaVinci Resolve, which I use to edit my videos, or watch content like on Amazon Prime Video because of how color accurate it is. It does have a glossy finish, which allows you to get those inky blacks from OLED, but it does have a bit of reflection as is typical and starts losing some of its brightness and vibrancy past a 45 degree angle. If there was one thing that I found that I had issues with, it has a slight rainbow fringing around text when you look really closely, but it isn't really something that you notice in regular use and at a typical distance. The fast response time in 120 hertz refresh rate are great and have the potential to be really amazing for things like gaming, especially on something so light and thin. My VivoBook S15 is powered by 16 gigabytes of LPDR5X RAM, which is not user replaceable. That means that you'll want to make sure that you choose the right RAM size upon purchasing. It does have a one terabyte SSD, which you can replace, and also has an Adreno GPU, which is a part of the Snapdragon X Elite processor. In everyday use, this thing flies. It's smooth, quiet, and hold a charge for a long time. I got about 13 hours generally on a single charge on its 70 watt hour battery, which isn't quite the 18 plus hours they advertise, but it's still on par with the practical battery life that you'd find on a MacBook Air. This is good. For a while, non-ARM based laptops have had a relatively short battery life of six hours or less, which is rough. A laptop that can get you through an entire work shift on the battery alone is a requirement for me. Regarding speed tests, here are some of the results on and off the plug through various tests. What has been typical with many laptops is a significant performance drop when off the plug, but on the VivoBook S15, there's still a decrease in performance, but it's minimal, which is fantastic to see, and that's because of the Snapdragon X Elite processor. Things are more complicated for those who like to play games. Given that the Snapdragon X Elite is a new processor based upon the ARM architecture over x86, the processors that we're used to, the biggest downside is compatibility with all your apps. It took a couple years to really start ironing out when the Mac moved over to Apple Silicon, and it's likely to take a couple years in this case as well. Microsoft's Prism translation layer is built in to make it so that your existing apps will still work through emulation, and it works in most cases, but not natively. Because of that, not all games will work, like Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order, or Apex Legends, which don't even launch. Different games and the Snapdragon processors are constantly updated to be more compatible, so having a list or link put in the description would be futile as it's constantly changing. However, you can search and see the list of games that don't work, like this one, which is relatively recent to the time of filming. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Cyberpunk 2077 work at 1080p and on the lowest settings to hover around 30 frames per second, but not consistently. If you play AAA games, this laptop it just can't do it right now, and possibly ever. But you'll be fine if you're playing games like Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Stardew Valley, Minecraft, or City Skyline. By the way, if you want to hear how loud the fans get when they're on max, here's what it sounds like when I open up Horizon Zero Dawn. 
It says the S15 is not compatible with it because it doesn't have three gigabytes of GPU RAM, but it does seem to be running and can get close to 60 frames per second on the lowest settings. You can adjust your fan settings in the My Asus Control Center as well. Essentially, this is not the laptop to get if you want to play more graphically intensive games, but more casual games. Whether or not this laptop will change over time to support and run more games and run them well, or follow the max trend of having few graphically intensive options is yet to be determined. The Snapdragon X Elite processor inside the VivoBook S15 does have a dedicated MPU for up to 45 tops for AI tasks. This is a Microsoft Copilot Plus PC, which means it has a dedicated Microsoft Copilot button that allows you to ask questions for research, help summarize and perform other tasks, and even keep a journal that benefits from AI. You can even generate images if you want to. But uh, how do you feel about Microsoft Copilot and what would you use it for? Let me know in the comments. In many ways, the ASUS VivoBook S15 is the MacBook Air for Windows that we've been waiting for, which is fantastic to finally be able to say. It is a laptop with a thin, light form factor and an incredibly efficient processor that will last you an entire workday and more off of the charger. This is great if you prefer Windows over Mac OS. It jumps ahead of the MacBook Air with its excellent OLED display and Windows Hello. The areas that fall behind or need to be resolved are the speakers, trackpad, greater app support, and gaming. Otherwise, this is a a fantastic laptop at a competitive price compared to the MacBook Air. If you'd like to purchase or learn more about the Asus VivoBook S15, check out the links in the description to find the best price. I have been seeing it on sale already, so make sure you check out all the links to find out that best price. This review was made possible with a review sample provided by Asus, which was used for about a month. Asus did not sponsor this video or have any editorial input or review. This video is supported by viewers like you and in part by Sihu. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.